Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of 3D Boxing Podcast. It is good to be back. I've been gone for a while. I was at the uh, Pro Grey Fight in, in New Orleans. You can check out all the content I've got there on Texas Boxing Scene. Uh, we're going to get into that fight, too. We're going to get into Regis. Um, we did this last week with, um, not with Josh Taylor, with Tiafimo Lopez uh, and the whole world overreacting to Tiafimo Lopez's uh, win. Um, and now they're overreacting in the opposite direction to Regis's Pro Grey's less than stellar performance. Um, we're going to get into it. Um, but before we do, please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, all from social media. Quick hits come at you every day, twice a day, uh, to keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Um, all right, let's let's get into today's show. Also, please subscribe to the other channel, Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. All proceeds from Texas Boxing Scene on YouTube. Go to uh, Autism Research and Recovery. Um, all right. This was a horrible performance against a fighter who was try- just trying to survive. Um, it was not a good pro grade performance. Uh, you know, we talked to pro grade after the fight. More or less, he said, you know, it was a distraction. It, it is difficult dealing with all of that that goes along with fighting a hometown fight. Um, and he's had to talk to Matchroom again about uh, fighting in New Orleans. He said he wants to go back on the road and then maybe down the road. It's a distraction. I, I was in a hotel with him. I, I saw him get mobbed. You know, there's a million people around him pulling him in every direction. And he wants to take care of all of, all of his people. Um Tickets, autographs, appearances, workouts, like everyone wants a piece of them. It's a distraction. This is why you don't play Alabama on your homecoming, right? It's just too much of a distraction. You're not going to be at your best, and he wasn't at his best. Um, Now, that being said, he fought a guy who was totally disengaged, uh, was fighting to survive from the opening round, maybe if it's going to knock down. Uh, You know, Zaria is a decent fighter. You know, he he, he competes at the world level. He's not a terrible fighter. Uh, but it was just it was just disheartening to see. And I, I talked to Bobby Benton, Regis Progress head trainer, immediately after the fight, and, and basically what he said was he, he gave Zuri a lot of credit. You know, he wanted to make it a stinker, he wanted to make it boring, and he wanted just to survive, and that's what he did. And then I asked him, I said, "You keep saying you give him credit. If he was your fighter, if you were working his corner, would you have come up with that game plan? Is that what you would have told him to do?" And he said, "No." I would have, we'd be trying to win a world title. And, and that's my point. You know, Zaria never really put himself in position to really win that fight. And I, I you can debate the scorecards. Um, this is a, a, a record smashing <laughs> amount of punches landed. Um, it's the least amount of punches ever landed in a 12 round title fight since it, it, since the uh, start of CompuBox, which goes back probably 30-plus years. I think it goes back to the 80s and 90s. Um, this was egregious. Um, it was an awful fight. Pro Gray was not good in it. Uh, Zaria never fought to win. It was just a disaster from start to finish. From start to finish, this fight was a disaster. Um, I, I feel bad. There was I was in, in a donut shop, Hertz Donuts, um, right on Loyola Street. Not far from the venue, um, the day before the fight after the weigh-in, and I told the lady there, um, you know, it was going to be a good fight, and she said, you know, the conversation was, you know, I, I want to go, uh, but it's probably too expensive. I said, no, you know, the tickets are only twenty bucks. You know, it's not that bad. And she got excited, and she said, I can take my son. Should I take my son? He's fourteen. I was like, yeah, you should take him. It'd be a great night. Uh, <laughs> boy, boy, was that bad advice. I feel like I should send her 40 bucks and give her her money back because she brought those tickets on my advice. So if anyone knows the lady that worked on uh, Hertz Donuts um, on Loyola Street in New Orleans, um, the Friday afternoon, 
um, of the fight. Send me your contact information. I want to send her 40 bucks for getting those tickets. Um, I, I felt bad. There's no way her son's a boxing fan now after that. Um, it, it was that bad of a fight. Um, I don't know. All right. Um, but Pro Gray is an excellent fighter. Yeah, it, it, it was a bad performance. This is a guy who, in his last fight, absolutely destroyed Jose Cepeda. Jose Cepeda is a guy who arguably uh, Ramirez. Uh, he destroyed Jose Jose Vargas. Um, he beat uh, Ivan Branchek, stopped Branchek, uh, beat Jose Pedraza, beat Carlos Diaz, beat Abner Lopez. Uh, Zepeda is a world-class fighter, a really, really good fighter. Uh, and, and this is a guy that Poray just destroyed, absolutely destroyed him. So I, I don't want to hear that Poray shot. Progray, it was a bad performance, and I think we're going to get Poray versus Devin Haney and pick Regis Poray. I know all of you are going to mock me for picking Regis Poray. Regis Poray is going to beat Devin Haney. And I, I know that you know, he didn't look good. This wasn't his best performance. Did Tiafimo Lopez look good in losing um, to Sandor Martin? Did he look good in losing to George Cambosis? Yes, he lost to Sandor Martin. Did he look good in those fights? No, he bounced back. Now, I understand Regis is 34, so it's going to be a little harder for him to bounce back, but it wasn't – this was not as bad as the Sandor Martin performance. He just had a guy who wouldn't engage. Yes, Regis needed to do a better job in cutting off the ring. Absolutely. But Zaria, like I said, Zaria is a, 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 a decent fighter. He's not going to win a world title. Uh, but he's a decent fighter, and he was he all he wanted to do was survive, and he was able to survive. You know, he lost a a, a competitive decision to Bar- Barbosa. He has one of a popular Cesar Cano. Um, and that's really his 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 claim to fame right there. He beat an undefeated fighter on the way up. He's got he's got a couple of wins there. Um but Pablo Cesar Cano and, and Barbosa was what kind of put him on the map. And, uh, you know, th- these these were good fights. Um, and, and like I said, Zaria belongs at the world stage. He's just, you know, he's not going to win at that level. And he seemed content on surviving. I saw his, uh, not his promoter, uh, you know, Brian Vasquez or whatever his name is, Koto's chief second of uh, co-promotions. And, and he seemed content, happy with his performance. And it just seemed weird to me. Like, you never put yourself in position to win. I don't know if Daniel Ita Zaria is ever, Zaria is ever going to get another world title fight. Right, he's definitely not going to win anytime soon with that performance, unless you know something completely bogus happens, and he's got Carlos Ocampo's team who keeps getting big fights. But that being said, he's going to have to go back to the drawing board, and it's going to be three, four years till he can get himself back in that position, if ever. Right, uh, he's going to have to win a bunch of fights. He's going to have to rebuild himself. He's going to have to make himself relevant again, uh, because that was terrible. That, that was that was that was terrible. Uh, it, it, it was boring, and he never went to win. Um, but he he's a he he's a he's a quality fighter. He's got skills. He was able to survive, which is all he wanted to do. Um, you, you run through that division. Um, you know, Jose Carlos Ramirez. Did he look great? And I understand he got the stoppage. Did he look great against Kome? Did he look great against Victor Postal? He, he he lost to uh, he he beat Zapata but really lost to him. He looked good against uh, you, know, you know what I'm saying. He, and he's been ducking Progre for years. He's been ducking him since he fought Amir Mom five six years ago. You know I, we, we already talked about um, TV Lopez, Sabriel Matias. Did uh, Sabriel Matias look good? When he got dropped and beat down by a guy named Petrus Enignan. Did he look good in that fight? You know, everyone has a bad fight. In boxing, the sample size is much smaller. Like Major League Baseball, you get 600 plate appearances a year. So your last performance really sticks with you. But if you guys think Prograde is shot or Prograde is no good, like, guys, go look at his entire body of work. Prograde is, is a master boxer puncher. He's a southpaw with pop and speed and skills. 
you know, he makes you miss. He can, he can outbox you from long range like he did with Josh Taylor. He can get it inside and destroy you. He's got real one-punch power. Regis Progray ain't going anywhere. And I'm telling you right now, Regis Progray is going to beat Devin Haney. Should that happen next? And I do. I was in the hotel. Devin Haney's dad, Bill Haney, was there. And he told me that they're going to go look at Regis Progray. And if they look good, they'll make the fight. I saw him after the fight in the hotel. And he said, we're going to make that fight. I said to him, but you said he had to look good. Did he look good to you? He laughed. And Devin sent a picture of Eddie Hearn with, with Devin smiling. Like I'm confident that this fight's going to get made. I, I think Devin's going to get made. And I, I think Regis is going to beat him. Let me know what you guys think. Leave your thoughts, comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Follow 3D Boxing, 3D Boxing Blog, and all forms of social media. Quick Hits comes at you every day, twice a day, 8 to 10 minutes a day. I keep you up to date on the latest, greatest boxing news and rumors. Uh, it is June 20th, 2023, from Texas to the world. Uh, thank you, and God bless. Don't miss a tweet, post, story, or video. 3D Boxing is on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Hit the subscribe button now to stay inside the ring.